Have you ever heard of the Barbera grape or wine? I've been drinking wine for, for over 20 years and had never heard of it. It wasn't until about, about 2002 th that I had my first glass of Barbera. The only reason I did was because I was working in a wine tasting room and had the opportunity to taste a lot of really great wines. In this episode, we're going to, to clear up some, some confusion about several Italian grapes that are, are mistaken for Barbera and look at several things virtually nobody knows about the Barbera grape. I'm really excited about this one. Come on, let's go. Hey, Posse, I'm Pierre, and welcome to Asti Wine Consultants. Today we're talking about the Barbera grape. We're going to be learning five things about uh, the grape. Some general trivia, where it's from, the basics of the grape varietal, its taste profile, and some suggested pairings. Uh, plus there'll be a, a little bonus at the end where we'll clear up some confusion about Barbera and several other important grapes. I'd really appreciate it if you would hit like, subscribe, and the little bell so you'd be notified when there's a new post. And also, please make sure that you share this with your wine friends. I'm sure they'd appreciate it also. Are you ready to get started? Number one, some general trivia. Barbera has its origins in Italy. As best we can tell, the northern part of Italy in the, in the Piedmont area, you know, close to the French border. Since about 83% of all Barbera is grown in Italy, we'll spend most of our time focusing on Italian Barbera. It's best known uh, for its starring role in northern Italy's Piedmont or Piemonte region of Alba and Asti, my namesake. It's a dark-skinned, fresh, light-bodied red wine with high levels of acidity and low tannins. It's the third most planted red grape in Italy after Sangiovese and Montepulciano. Did you know that Barbera is a thousand years older than Cabernet Sauvignon? Its origins go back to the 7th century compared to Cab's origin at about the 17th century. It was the focus of a scandal in the 1980s when eight Italians were found dead and 30 hospitalized after drinking Barbera. Several Italian winemakers had added methanol uh, an illegal additive to their, their Barbera. Actually, this was happening with a very wide variety of wines all throughout Europe. Producers were trying to increase the alcohol level to compete with the higher alcohol in American wines. Barbera is the quintessential wine of the people. It's meant to be enjoyed young and cheap. <laughs> so, so what are you waiting for? It's time Go out and buy some. Number two, where it's grown. You can see on the chart, and as I mentioned earlier, at over 80% of global production, Italy is the workhorse behind Barbera. Now the United States has a respectable 9%, and that's actually increasing. With people learning more about Barbera, there are more plantings in the US, actually globally. But, but I'll say part of of why this grape is so disproportionately grown in Italy is because many Italian winemakers love Barbera and prefer to drink it and drink it themselves rather than exporting it. I actually think that's pretty cool. How are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, write Italia in the comments below. Number three, the basics behind the grape varietal. There are several basic designations for wine coming out of Italy that apply to all wines, including Barbera. These designations have to do with the quality of the wine. As you can see here, the designations are from everyday sort of wines to uh, the best wines. VDT, IGT, DOC, or the newer designation DOP, and DOCG. The wines that are best known are Barbera de Alba DOC and Barbera de Asti DOCG. On any wine, 
you're going to, to want to look for these abbreviations on the label. Here, let me show you what I mean. On the neck of, of a bottle, you'll find either DOC or DOCG. And somewhere on the bottle, you'll find IGT or, or D, VDT, excuse me. It'll be somewhere on the bottle. Besides the villages of Alba and Asti, you can see here, there are a whole host of other areas in the DOC and DOCG designations. I usually stick with those, those wines from those areas. As far as the, the taste profile is concerned, Barbera uh, has a mishmash of flavor. Somehow it tastes both rich and it is light body. I think the main reason for that is that it has really dark skins that dye the wine almost a black color, but it has a light body. As you can see on the chart, when young, most Barberas have a bright red cherry character, soft tannins, and a roundness to them. <laughs> when more mature and allowed to age in the bottle for a few years, they turn denser with darker fruits and its trademark cherry flavor. Actually, aging in big casts instead of standard barrels can, can bolster the tannins, but, but not too much uh, to make up for the, the generally low tannins and adds a little bit of a toasty vanilla note. Uh, it has relatively high mouth-watering acidity. Number five, some suggested food pairings. Let's start with complementary pairings. As you see on the chart, I've listed a couple of ideas that will complement, be congruent, or uh, harmonize with the Barbera. With a complementary pairing, the idea here is bright acidity in the wine will make your rich, fatty, or high tannin dishes complete. As far as the, the regional pairings, it's pretty straightforward. Always remember, if it grows together, it goes together. <laughs> well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about Barbera. Well, actually, almost. Hang in there for, for a quick bonus uh, to clear up some, some confusion about Barbera and several other Italian wines. But first, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. If you got something out of it, let me know in the comments below. Also, hit subscribe and the little bell to be notified when I post new videos. And Share this video with your red wine lovers, uh, actually those who particularly owe you a bottle or two. All right, are you ready for the bonus? So what's the difference between Barbera, Barbaresco, Barolo, and Brunello? The words Barbera, Barbaresco, and Barolo look and sound similar and actually hail from Italy's Piemonte region as well. But Barbaresco and Bur Bur easy for me to say. Barbarescos and Barolos are made from the Nibbiolo grape, not the Barbera grape. Those two wines are named for the regions where the Nibbiolo grapes are grown. I actually have a video about the Nibbiolo grape which provides more detail on these two wonderful wines. There'll be a link to it for you in just a second. That leaves Brunello. This wine comes from Tuscany, not from Piemonte. Brunellos are, are made 100% from the Sangiovese grape, which is the grape used to make Chianti. Now, you got it all. Everything you need to know about the Barbera grape and wine. I hope you'll expand your horizon and indulge yourself and go out and, and get it. I think you'll love it. And thanks again for joining me. Until next time, cheers. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine-related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.